Good morning. On this edition of Rick's Road Trips, we're doing something a little bit different. We're kind of tag teaming this. I'm doing the first half and Rick is coming the second half. So we're heading out to St. Augustine, Florida, the oldest and first city in the United States. The distance to St. Augustine from Walt Disney World Resorts is about an hour and 50 minutes and about 123 miles. Fun fact, Florida elementary school students take their fourth grade field trips to St. Augustine. <laughs> and the distance from Universal Orlando Resorts is an hour and 46 minutes and 115 miles. All right, we've made it. We are in St. Augustine at the Comanche Cove Marina, and we're gonna take a pontoon tour of the estuaries around St. Augustine. So the tour we are taking is called Florida Water Tours. The cost is $29. It's about a 90 minute tour. It's an estuary tour on a pontoon boat. They serve both non-alcoholic and alcoholic drinks. We can also spot landmarks including the Bridge of Lions, Castillo de San Marcos, St. Augustine Lighthouse, and even more. So along the way we'll be searching for dolphins, manatees, sea turtles, pelicans, ospreys, to be great. is Anastasia Island State Park. So you can see there's canoe rentals out there, there's fishing and paddle boarding, um, and this is a sanctuary also for sea turtles. Here they are kayaking out in that intracoastal waterway. <laughs> Looks like a lot of fun. So behind me here is the Atlantic Ocean. It's actually pretty calm today. It's not too bad. Believe it or not, is a museum housing the strange and the odd. It's kind of a auditorium, you could say. Anyway, this one's been around since the 1950s. It's the very first Ripley's Believe It or Not. So I'm, I'm excited to go in and see the kind of cool collection that he has. In here is a statue of David. Now he's kept behind these huge hedges because, well, he's naked. He was sculpted in 1963 for the New York World's Fair. Some of the sculptures out here are from Ripley's own private collection. Today, the three-story museum showcases 300 interactive exhibits, including some of Ripley's original collection.
You're a beast. Right up these stairs. I will have to say, these old wooden stairs are amazing. Very cool bar. And here we are. Got some live music playing too. It's got some great views up here for sure. Alright, so I'm just stepping out back really quick, sitting on the stairs, just hanging out. And while they're finishing up their meal, I thought I'd do a mixed quick food review. So I had the brisket, and I was a little surprised that it wasn't like a pulled pork type of brisket. It was a slab of meat. So on the sandwich, it was messy, but it was delicious. The Carolina barbecue sauce was to die for. The red onions on there and the pickles were just, and even like um, mustard too, it was perfect. And the, the fries that it came with, probably the best fries I've ever had in my entire life. Um, the next thing that was really, really good, I tried some of um, the nachos, and nachos were fantastic too. Again, the red onion is super fresh. All the veggies on there were like great. Um, and then the chicken tenders were actually really, really good too. They weren't stringy or chewy. They were absolutely perfect, 100% fresh. So anyway, there's your next quick food review of the tab. has all kinds of really cool, unique shops, like earthbound and crystals and things like that. And then there's some high-end resort wear shops as well. But I will tell you the best part is the every street, every block has an ice cream shop or a candy shop. Probably one of the most famous places for fudge is Kilwins. Apples. Their fudge is to die for. My favorite is the Rocky Road fudge. Absolutely the best. <laughs> You're on St. George Street? Hop on into here. <laughs> you can actually do sample tastings here. Street. We're gonna take a left and go to the Pirate Museum. <laughs> Real coins, $1,900. These are $2,895 for the big one, but it's still in the rock where they pulled it from. Wow. Our <laughs> Royal. <laughs> awesome. Artifacts that they have pulled out of shipwrecks. Wow.
we're entering now the Hollywood Pirates. Oh, my favorite, the Goonies. Hey, there it is, Captain Jack's Pharaoh sword. Right next to the Pirate Museum is the Colonial Oak Music Park, and it is absolutely gorgeous in here. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Where they have the picnic tables, and they have this beautiful tree with lighting. Oh, I bet it's just stunning at night. the boats. Now they're just decoration around the school. So we're, as we're rounding out day one of our St. Augustine adventure, we're heading to Ghost Tours next. This is the one that I've been looking forward to the most. The cost is $25 per person. It lasts about an hour and a half and it's a walking tour. As the oldest city of European origin in the United States, St. Augustine harbors a fascinating history haunted by the restless souls of former residents. You'll follow a master storyteller to sites of reputed haunting, see historic landmarks such as Huguenot and Tullamato Cemetery, and discover traumatic tales from St. Augustine's 450 year history. Now you're in the oldest continually occupied city in the USA today, San Augustine, St. Augustine, La Florida. Now the amount of Spaniards. The fellow standing right behind me there, that's the gentleman who did it all. Don Pedro Menendez de Avilés of Spain. The captain and the admiral of all the ocean fleets of Spain. Ooh, top dog. He's got a specialty. He likes to hunt down pirates and likes to kill them. Me and him really don't get along, but like I told you. He's also a very devout Catholic. If you're not a Catholic in Florida or St. Augustine, you're a heretic. If you're a heretic, you're going to die. That's what we do. You become a citizen of the follow the king of Spain and become a Catholic or you're a goner. Ties them up ten at a time. And he is behind their backs and he takes them up in the dunes and when he gets them up in there cuts their throats with knives like this. Slits them. Cuts their heads off. Throws them in that beautiful bay. In that beautiful bay in the middle of our city. Oh it's so placid. The blue Matanzas Bay. You know what Matanzas means my friends? That's right. Murder. Because that's what it's named after that particular day. And to this very day, it's still called the Bay of the Slaughters, Matanzas Bay. Now, I remember that day. That went out rolling around them heads, they floated in. Floated 
times. Now, we are in the Plaza de la Constitucion. This is our plaza, our central meeting place. The oldest plaza in the United States today. Now, when they had an execution here, they did it mostly a certain kind of way. It's called garroting. You ever heard of such a thing? Yes. Good, good. You look like a kind of guy that would be like the executioner. Or something like that. They get, they get a big strong man. Because what they would do when they wanted to execute you back in those days, they sink a pole in the ground. Nice thick wooden pole, drill a hole in it. Stand you right in front of that hole's about where your neck would be. Uh huh. They put a rope through that hole, around your neck, back through that hole, and a gentleman like this, a big strong man, willing and able, put a stick in there and he starts to twist and turn. He's gonna strangle you slowly to death. Headed out to Matanzas Bay, Slaughter Bay. Hmm. Here where the sky meets the water, that's the Atlantic Ocean. That's the entrance to the bay. That's why this town is here. Now that's a treacherous inlet, very shallow. There's all kinds of shipwrecks out there. No gold or silver, really. Look in there with me. Come on. Look in here, honey. Look in there with me. Woo! Look at that man's face. It's all swollen up. Looks like a party balloon about to bust. It's undulating. Whoa. Mouth is wide open. <laughs> and there's a bubbling brew of frothy froth just a percolating in there. His tongue is like wagging like a dog tail. <laughs> His eyes are going back and forth, back and forth. And that's when everybody in the church notices. That little tiny crack on the face of the glass. Yeah. And it's about that time. Look in there. That it exploded. <laughs> yeah, out comes a fine spray in a mist. Yeah, bones. That his brains. That's his brains and his guts. There's bones and teeth and eyeballs. What? Come here. And with the end of the ghost tour, we are done with day one of St. Augustine. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. I am exhausted. We'll see you tomorrow with Rick. Bye. Good morning. It is day two in St. Augustine, and I have a friend with me. <gasps> look who's here! I made it. <laughs> Thank goodness. Oh look, I got it. Let me get down here with you. Oh, you hush. <laughs> That's crazy. Here, I'll. You know what? I'm gonna do the Relinquish passing control. of the torch. The oh. passing of the torch. There we go. I'm in yes. charge. It feels so right. It does. It feels so much better. You were the superhero yesterday. Oh well, it, it was a it was a fun day, but it was a really long day. I actually filled up the SD card yeah. yesterday. It was crazy how much footage I got. So, well, I'll sort through it all and we'll make a nice good video, hopefully. And I have no idea what you did, so I can't wait to see the video myself. <laughs> see what you did yesterday. But what stuff. is the first thing on the agenda today? Now that I'm here. All right. So yesterday we did the trolley tour, but we were on and off so much that mm -hmm. it was kind of um, it wasn't so smooth. So today we're gonna take the trolley tour all the way around without kind of getting off or stopping. So then we can show you guys some of the more historical part right, of well, St. Augustine. Uh, lead the way. Okay. And just for the record, this is a different tour, a trolley tour than yesterday. This is actually the red train tour. The tickets for this red train tour, you can purchase at Ripley's Believe It or Not, and it would be $20 per person.
Castillo de San Marcos. It has stood guard over the oldest city in the United States here in St. Augustine, Florida since 1672. That's 300 years before the Dolphins went undefeated. It is $15 per person to enter the fort. Nikki has a fun little fact for you guys. Yes, this fort has never been lost in battle. Never lost in battle is the key word. It's been under siege many times, but never lost. Every time it's been handed over to a new country because that country won a war somewhere else and it was part of the agreement to hand over the fort. From the moat to enter, we go through this drawbridge and head to the stone checkpoint. Then there is an island inside the moat. You still are not inside the fort. You have to go across another drawbridge to actually get inside of the fort. And that is when you see the heavy doors. So much protection just to get into the fort. That is the original Spanish coat of arms. Is it a national like park? I think it is. I think it's national. Here's a little model of the fort. We are right here right now. This room has a little model of how they built the arches for this fort. And what's this, Nikki? It looks like, you know, a pulley system as to how they brought that heavy coquina into the area. Ah. Here we have the Sally Port doors. These are the original doors from the fort. They moved them inside for protection though. And here we have the oldest restrooms in the United States. I'm being facetious by the way. Here we have one of the very old cannons that used to protect the fort. Weighs over 4,500 pounds. So we'll just explore the lower half of this fort, the various rooms, and each room will kind of have an exhibit to explain some historical background of the fort. Uh, for example, this one room here is going to have um, a cannon and kind of explain the different types of cannonballs that they used uh, when firing to protect the fort. With this room here, we have some old school graffiti. February 17th, 1880. Then we have Alex Carter here, 1888. And then we have another date over here. Looks like maybe 1884. For this bit, of, I'll call it graffiti still. They have a little plaque for it. It's hard to make out on the actual wall, but it is right there. But here's a depiction of what was drawn onto the wall. The fort has had three names since it was built. The Castillo de San Marcos was the original Spanish name. And when the English took control of the fort from 1763 to 1784, it was called Fort St. Mark. When Florida became a U.S. territory. The fort was named Fort Marion. However, in 1942, the original name, Castillo de San Marcos, was restored. This fort has had four flags flown over it. The Spanish flag, the British flag, the United States flag, and the Confederate States of America flag during the Civil War. Religion in the fort. This appears to be the room that was used for the religious ceremonies throughout the years. I sure a lot of Catholic ceremonies during the Spanish reign. I'm not sure with the British, but uh, this would be the room that uh, 
the soldiers could worship. This is a replica of the British quarters. Um, things to note here, those bunks do not look long enough for me. So the first floor, we have the British there, but the second floor is domed, and that was built by the Spanish during the renovations of the 1730s, and that allowed, because of the shape, uh, for heavier cannon to be up top. I'm not exactly sure what that second floor was used for, if it was for storage or whatnot. The plaque really doesn't say, but the fact is the design of it allowed for those heavier cannons on the third level. Inside of this little room here, another exhibition. This one sort of talks about defending the fort. It has some artifacts of some cannons, some real life cannons that were recovered, at least one real life cannon that was recovered, uh, I think from the water and then a little model that shows, I think, the Spanish defending the fort. This big round circle that's covered up, the original well to the fort. I wonder if that tapped into the aquifer. Probably. Here we have a storage room, place to store provisions, firewood, food. They may have stored in here, grains, fruits, vegetables, any type of food. And then in the barrels, who knows? maybe some rum but they have rum in here or if it's the british perhaps some type of ale unfortunately at the moment the gun deck is closed because of weather there's a lot of bronze up there on the second deck the gun deck um, which is a conductor for lightning so with the storms in the area they have closed it unfortunately for us today but if you're here if you visit hopefully it'll be open for you guys Here's a room with a different style of bunking for the soldiers. One big long bed with many mattresses stuffed with hay or moss maybe. A little dining area. See the various coats and outfits hanging up above the bunks. Now I don't know if it's true or not, but I think so. When uh, the, like, the settlers first came here to Florida, uh, they wanted to use moss, like to, you know, to line the beds, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they, I think the Indians would do that. Um, but when the, the settlers saw that they did it, they would do it as well. But what they didn't know is the Indians would boil the moss, right, killing like the chinch bugs and everything. Yes, because there's like chinch bugs and spiders mm -hmm. and lice that live in with the moss. in the moss. So you have to boil it. Here's one of the soldiers' pets. I believe that's a carrier pigeon for the British Army, finally making its way back. Slightly less accommodating than the bunks we just saw, the prison. Yeah, it looks really creepy in there. I would not want to stay in there very long. No, it reminds me of that movie, Count of Monte Cristo. I can see it. So creepy. We're gonna leave the fort for now. Since we did pay, we are allowed to come back if the weather is better to try to get up on this, uh, the gun deck there. But until then, let's go to lunch. I'm not certain, but this may have been the first Starbucks in America. You see, a lot of people think that started in Seattle. Not true. St. Augustine, the first Starbucks. What do you think of when you think of St. Augustine? an Irish gift shop. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Young people don't know that movie quote. To find our lunch today, we're gonna go down the main drag here, St. George Street. I'm sure we'll find something here. We have made it to our destination, Pizza Alley's on St. George. First up, garlic breadsticks. That's a pizza pie from Pizza Alley. Done with the pizza. Yeah, it was good pizza, basically. Yeah. Cheese pizza, I don't have a lot to say about it. <laughs> uh, so it's thicker than um, a, New a, York. a New York style, but not as thick as a like pan pizza. So it's kind of in between. It's a nice mm -hmm. fluffy, you know, happy middle 
fluffiness. <laughs> but for me, I had to have the pizza so I can have dessert. Yes. We are on our way to find some gelato right now. Gelato. I think we have time for gelato time. I got all the time in the world for this. Okay, I went with your standard strawberry swirl. I think Nikki here got something a little more fancy. What do you call this? So I got spumoni. All done with the gelato. We're gonna head over to the wax museum right now. So what we have here, Potter's Wax Museum, America's first wax museum and the first or oldest authentic drugstore, circa 1886. One thing we should mention, when you're visiting St. Augustine, a lot of the stuff we're showing you, there's little tours that come with it. That's right, a little bit of extra cost, but it really expands the knowledge base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, buy you a little ticket, take a little tour, mm -hmm. learn a little more. Did you think we could take a road trip and not mention the theme parks? Like we had Voldemort and Harry Potter and Dobby. <laughs> Look at that. A little bit of the theme parks here. So in this wax museum, you have some historical figures, you've got some sports, you've got some entertainment, you've got some Hollywood. <laughs> a potpourri of wax figures. done with the wax museum it was a pretty fun tour yeah it's probably one of my favorites I enjoyed this one and the pirate museum mm -hmm. a lot those okay. are my two favorites yeah cool. maybe one day they'll have a wax uh, figure of you <laughs> me no <laughs> you maybe <laughs> isn't this convenient looks like we have reached the end of the trail it looks like we have reached the end of the trail <laughs> we have what do you think of your St. Augustine adventure. Oh, I thought it was great. Oh my gosh, there's so much to do here. It's just, I mean, it's chock full of history and like fun little activities and museums. Loved it. So much to do. Yes. Really, so yeah. hopefully this video will give you a little bit of a guide of some things you may want to do when you visit. So, as always, adventures out there. You can find it on a road trip. <laughs>